Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The House of Wisdom contained so many books that the Tigris River turned black from the ink when all of them were destroyed. Back in the 9th century AD, the House of Wisdom was established in Baghdad. It contained manuscripts on mathematics, astronomy, science, medicine, and philosophy from Persia, India, and Greece. There were also astronomical observatories, laboratories for chemistry and alchemy, and a center for studying science. Everyone had access to it, and everyone could be schooled there. The library and its work were supported by everyone, including merchants and the military. Hulagu Khan's army threw so many books into the Tigris River that they formed a bridge that would support a man on horseback. 13 February 1258, Baghdad, then a city of one million, falls to the Mongols as the Abbasid Caliphate is destroyed, ending the Golden Age. Baghdad, founded in the 8th century by Abbasid al-Mansur, was a hub of learning and commerce during that golden age. In 1258, under the command of Hulagu Khan, sacked Baghdad, destroying the House of Wisdom, the leading library and the leading intellectual center of the Arab. It was the greatest repository of books in the world, and had become one of the greatest hubs of intellectual activity in the Middle Ages, attracting the most brilliant Arab and Persian minds. Would you consider this incident to be the biggest calamity in human history? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. nineteen oh seven, April. Duncan McDowell's attempts to weigh the soul. In April nineteen oh seven, the New York Times published a short but sensational article. They claimed a doctor named Duncan McDowell of Haverhill, Massachusetts, had succeeded in weighing a human soul as it left a dying person. McDowell had placed people dying of tuberculosis on a scale to weigh them as they passed on. In his first two attempts, an immediate loss of one ounce of weight was registered upon the moment of death. In the third case, it took one whole minute after death before the weight disappeared, a fact the paper claimed McDougall attributed to the subject in question being slow of thought and action in life. His soul just took time to figure out it could leave. In all, McDougall successfully weighed six people as they died. And in each case, he found a loss of between one half to one full ounce, which, according to McDougall, could only have been the souls of these people leaving their bodies. I was reminded of Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, upper left picture. It's a funny fairy tale for children, quite famous, and I think most people have heard of it. Except that it was about 40 to 45 years ago when I was a kid. Now I see huge doors, engravings of giants, majestic buildings, and the thought creeps in, did the author really make up this fairy tale? Or was it all real? Also in the story, there is a line, we thought it best to stick to the old direction, rather than deviate more to the north, as in doing so we could be carried to the northwestern regions of the Great Deteriore the Arctic Sea. So, 
think now. In 2015, an international team led by archaeologists from the University of Cincinnati excavated near the ancient city of Pylos in the Peloponnese, in southwestern Greece. After two weeks of excavation, the remains and a scattering of gemstone jewelry were found in a wooden coffin. The site was dated 1500 to 1450 BC. In the grave was found a small only 36 mm long oval-shaped stone. It has been cleaned. The detail and precision of the carved fight seen on such hard stone is remarkable. Did the ancient Greeks have instruments for such fine work? Official science is very uncomfortable with the artifact. It is impossible not to recognize it. It was found in a burial site with a specific date. To recognize it is to rewrite history because such skills and knowledge should not yet exist. Anyway, this is the true meaning behind the word radioactive. The word radioactivity comes from the Latin words, radius activus, which means ray activity. The definition of ray is, each of the lines in which light and heat may seem to stream from the sun or any luminous body, or pass through a small opening. Activity definition is, engaging or ready to engage in physically energetic pursuits. So, basically, radioactive simply means that an object that is luminous and constantly or actively shining with light without any limit. A good example of radioactivity is the sun. It's very good for us, its active rays provide us with healing. This word is demonized, and people think it's automatically bad whenever they hear this word. This is how they made us fear these natural minerals, they have free energy in them, and they can be very beneficial for us. Anything that is beneficial is banned to the public, the government is constantly using it. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.